Welcome to the Man United stream, hope you're doing well. We've got an absolute storming show for you today. Yes, we've got an absolute insane, insane show coming up today because we're going to be talking about the Super League and why the Glazers were never going to sell up. We now know because the Super League has been given the go-ahead and this means the whole footballing structure as we know it is going to completely and radically be transformed. Will it actually happen though? That is what we're going to be discussing. Also in today's show, we're of course going to be talking about this takeover of that 25% by Jim Ratcliffe. What is going on? It does feel like it's in the air. It does feel like that it's coming. It feels like we're going to get an announcement anytime on this 25% takeover of United. Also in today's show, we're going to be talking about the transfers in and transfers out. There's lots and lots of news going around on players that will be leaving in January and possibly players coming in and which players are being earmarked as the ones United want to bring in. Let's kick off today's show with this huge, huge breaking news about the European Super League. What is it all about? Well, the European Court of Justice has just in the last few hours ruled in favour of a breakaway 18-team European Super League to be formed. Now, this means that FIFA and UEFA, the monopoly that they've had for years on the UEFA Champions League is going to go out the window. Well, that's what we're assuming that will happen. Now, from Manchester United's takeover perspective, we always knew that the Glazers were hanging on for some reason why were the Glazers not selling up and why were they still keen on holding on to United well we've got our answer they knew that this Super League idea this was still on the horizon and there was still hope that this would happen and of course it comes down to money they know that once they join the Super League they'll get lots lots more revenue coming into the United and they will milk every single penny of that money they will be pocketing everything that United make and once Man United are part of this Super League there's one thing that we all have to remember there's no qualifying you're in there full stop you're always there there's no pressure on United to qualify and therefore the owners will be guaranteed a lump sum of money every year without worry. They're not going to have to care about investing in the club and making sure that they qualify and there's pressure on them each year. No, there isn't. All they're worried about is just getting that money and putting it in the back pocket. It is very, very simple. If fans are in favour of this new structure and want to see the teams play against each other on a more regular basis, then you will get to see it. But just this morning, in response to this European Super League decision by the European Court, the UK government have announced that they will be setting up and introducing a new football regulator that will stop clubs from joining any similar breakaway competition in the future. Despite the European Court of Justice ruling that UEFA and FIFA rules blocking the European Super League are unlawful. What will that mean? There is a huge battle on the horizon, but we know at the end of the day, these billionaire owners, these huge, huge moguls around the world who own these clubs, when they want something to happen, they will get it done. But if fans are not in favour of this idea, then it's not going to happen. But the biggest problem with this European Super League is the exclusion of the lesser clubs. They have no hope, they have no desire and no aim in the future to grow as a club. And where do they get to? What is the possibility of joining another Super League if the other teams are in there and they've boxed it off and there's no way of cracking through and getting through that is the problem in this whole European Super League in my opinion I think it just stops other clubs from growing and those clubs that are part of this Super League of course they will just go on further and further making more money and the divide will just become so huge that no one really will care about the grassroots of football but again let us know what you think about this whole thing now turning our attention to Jim Ratcliffe and his 25% buyout of United. Now it all makes sense. It all makes sense why the Glazers did not want a full sale because they knew that this court case was on the horizon and they'd been probably told by their lawyers that this will get the green light. The, the European Court of Justice will give it the green light and they will be able to go ahead and set this European Super League up. And that's why they've been waiting 
and waiting to see this day. And that's why they did not put the whole club up for sale. Despite them being in financial difficulties, they were holding on and now they've got the possibility of making millions, if not billions, out of this European Super League. Now, of course, with this 25% takeover by Ratcliffe, we're also hoping that he brings in a cash injection to go out there and buy some players. Now, initially, we heard a few weeks back that Ten Hag said that there will be no new players being signed by Man United. However, in the last couple of days, we've started hearing concrete reports from sources that United will be signing new players in the January transfer window and one of the biggest targets will be a new centre-back. They know that they've got problems in the defence and Martinez being injured, Varane not being consist consistent and obviously Maguire now being injured and Evans not being their first choice. They need a new centre-back and they will be desperate to sign somebody. So watch this space. As well as a new centre-back, United also will be looking to sign a new striker so them are the two priority positions in January now what we've also heard in the last 24 hours is that Man United if they're not able to sell Jadon Sancho in this January transfer window they will cancel his contract meaning that they'll stop paying his wage they'll pay him off and get rid now that's a huge decision that the Man United board would make on terminated Jadon Sancho's contract now the reason why they'd want to terminate his contract even though they've not sold him is because of his wage every week every month the amount they're paying Jadon Sancho is astronomical and they know this they know that they could go out there actually pay Jadon Sancho off and still have change left over to go out there and buy a new player on a much less salary and give Ten Hag some further options in that squad. That is why they would probably terminate his contract. Again, let me know what you think about this Jadon Sancho issue. It's been going on for months now, but if they were to terminate his contract and bring in somebody else, do you think that's a really good decision or do you think they should still work on Jadon Sancho trying to bring him back into the fold of this United team rather than just terminate his contract and paying him off. Now we know that Man United have been linked to many centre-backs over the summer and are continually being linked with new centre-backs but for me if I was to point one player that United probably have on top of their priority list it's going to be the one and only Todibo. I think he will be a player that Man United will have scouted. They have scouted and they want him desperately to join. Man United. We are hearing that Spurs are also in for him so it's going to be a battle between these two clubs but I feel that if Todibo was given the option between Spurs and United it was hands down he will come to United and that's where United must act quickly and must get him in before any other club tries to swoop in and get Todibo. Now as for a striker United have been linked to Ivan Toni, they've been linked to Grassi and they've also been linked to Timo Werner. Now if I was given an option to buy any one of these three strikers I would probably opt for Ivan Toni because of his Premier League experience and his goal scoring record. The most likely however of these strikers to join Man United probably will be Grassi because of his value because of his release clause. I think that is probably the striker that Man United would end up signing if they had the option. Let us know which striker you prefer United to sign. Let us know Know what centre back you think Man United should be signing. It's going to be all hands on when it comes to January. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be absolutely insane. You know, everything concerning transfers and Man United is always crazy news. Make sure you hit the like button on this video and subscribe to the channel so you can keep up to date with everything that's going on at Man United. You are watching the Man United Stream channel, a channel by the fans for the fans.